So, what would you like to eat? It's not a question that was asked often in my home. I still reflexively respond with whatever you have. My mom hardwired us into, uh, into our childhood early on that we finish what we have before we ever ask for work. Being choosy or having needless demands were not encouraged in our home. I was an artistic kid and with my head in the clouds, I decided I wanted to pursue fashion design. I got into NIFT and I enjoyed every four year of it. I enjoyed every project I did, but I thrived in the creative environment. But when I entered the workforce, it wasn't the same. Brands were pouring all their money into marketing, not design. Cost cutting was more important than the quality of the garment. And there was a mounting pile of unsold stock after every collection. I had started feeling uncomfortable with my role in this. Because around the same time, I had started passively consuming content on climate change and the individual role that we play. I saw examples of people living minimally, reducing their days to zero, TED talks about people who could fit four years of their trash in one job, reducing their energy use, learning skills that would make them self-sufficient. And among all these efforts, I found zero waste very intriguing. The commute to my work looked something like this. So India produces 52 million tons of trash. And the problem isn't that we litter or we don't have enough dustbins. The problem is that we make trash at all. When I realized I could stop contributing to this, I couldn't unsee it anymore. Let me explain. When I started researching on a zero waste lifestyle, I realized that I had a problem. We have designed disposables into our lives for every need, and now we have become dependent on it. We can't imagine our lives without it. So who needs to fix this problem? There's no other animal in this planet that creates landfills. Humans are the only animals in the world who generate trash that sits around forever. Now I thought, obviously corporations, they are the ones who have designed it and they are selling this trash to us. But they will say, consumers are addicted, it's too late. And if you try to turn to the government, they will say, the policies are in place, citizens are not cooperating. Now both of them lack will and creativity in some ways, I felt. But I couldn't deny the fact that I was myself addicted to a trashy life. I could see plastic disposables piling up in my home from all the food deliveries and I wasn't bothering to learn how to cook or manage it otherwise. I could see plastic bands come and go in my city but I wasn't remembering to pick up my cloth bag and just go to the groceries. So for my tiny apartment in Mumbai, I decided let's try to go zero waste. Let's make this effort. I started composting my wet waste. I started cleaning and segregating whatever dry waste I had and I started looking for organizations that would divert it away from landfills. I started looking for package free stores so that whatever ingredients came in packets in my home, I could bring it in wholesale in my own cloth bags. I switched out a lot of products that were disposables in my home for reusables. And I made an exception wherever I couldn't help it, like medical waste. Now, I didn't trust myself to stick to the resolution, so I created an Instagram page where I would journal my entire progress, good days and bad days. And I started receiving long messages in my DMs. Apparently, sharing my imperfections had made this lifestyle less intimidating for people and inspired them to live sustainably as well. And I would share a lot of resources that spread and helped other people start adopting this lifestyle as well. But offline, I wasn't so inspiring. Every time I refused disposables, 
I would be dragged into a conversation and be forced to debate everyone's pessimism. Some would even bully and throw trash in front of me on purpose to see if that would piss me off. Now these were some common reactions I would receive. I would never do that. I would have the time to care so much. Your efforts are wasted. One person can't change anything. One person can't change anything is actually a very common response you'll receive when you try to live sustainably. It's a cost-benefit analysis we do when we start anything difficult in our life. Working out is not worth the effort if I don't get six-pack abs. Studying hard is not worth the effort if I don't top the class. Quitting smoking is not worth the effort, I'll die one day anyway. And now we apply it to sustainable living as well. Going zero waste is not worth the effort if I'm not sure that the planet can be saved. Now, I didn't want to waste my time thinking about how people don't care. If we start attaching morality to people's inability to change, we will only develop resentment. We are all in the same sinking ship, after all. So I focused my energy on those who were interested in changing, but they were still facing difficulties. Their comments were different. I didn't know the solution existed. Where can I find it? My friends make fun of me for carrying a reusable box everywhere. My mom won't let me compost at home. And this was pretty common as well. My family thinks I'm insulting them by buying secondhand only. And so on. Status quo is a huge hurdle when trying to shift to a sustainable habit. The rich contribute the most to the climate crisis with their consumption style. Yet we don't think about how aspiring for their lifestyle also makes us wasteful in our mindset. Almost everyone I know who has tried to live sustainably has been accused of acting too cheap. We're too ashamed of repairing our clothes and wearing it again. We're too ashamed of taking a bus if we can afford a car. India has one of the lowest per capita carbon footprint. That means per person we emit the lowest carbon emissions. But that is an average between cities and the rural areas. With the rising middle class, that will change soon if we are all aspiring for the rich lifestyle. So in 2019, I quit my full-time job and I decided to start a platform called Ulusu. Uh, the word in my mother tongue means to save. I don't know if I could save the planet, but I wanted to help those who wanted to try. So I came up with three major factors that help us in switching to a sustainable lifestyle. And you can hack into this if you have been thinking about making some drastic changes, but you just weren't able to get started. The first one is finding consistent inspiration. I always dreaded the question people ask me, so what was that one moment that inspired you to go zero waste? Because that's ridiculous. One moment is not enough to inspire you to change your entire life forever. You think of it like some superhero movement that we sit under a banyan tree and we suddenly find enlightenment that we need to change our lives. It doesn't work like that. We are what we consume. Think about the content that we are consuming every day. If you're watching pictures of people wearing pretty dresses, eating tasty food, on a daily basis in your mobile, you'll eventually feel like shopping. You'll eventually feel like placing an order and start craving. Similarly, if you follow the content of people who are living sustainably, repairing what they have, composting, you'll eventually get curious to try that as well. So when I started living sustainably, I decided that I would treat it like going to a gym. I just needed the intention to start, and the rest is just a habit that I can pick up. I might be good at it, I might be bad at it, but whatever I do, it will still be better than doing nothing. Second is resources. Do you have the time, access, the money to find the solutions that will help you live sustainably? Now, most of sustainable living is just reducing the consumption of what you already do. But in addition to that, you might need the help of organizations and product solutions as well. And a lot of people complain that sustainable products are expensive and there aren't enough solutions available. 
Now, the first one is kind of true because sustainable products right now are being made in small scale and being sold to a small niche. As the demand increases for it, the prices will also reduce. Also, when you buy a reusable, it's a one-time investment and then you never have to buy it ever again. Think about uh, the fact that we don't realize how many solutions are available. Why is that? They go undiscovered and under the radar. Think of a company that is selling you disposable trash. They will always have repeat customers because you will run out of the product that they sold you and you will come back to buy more. But think about a sustainable product and a brand that is selling you a reusable. They will only have you as a customer once. Imagine the difference in profit between both these companies. Someone is profiting at the cost of the planet. So I decided to start a map. It took me one year to discover all the resources I needed to comfortably start living zero waste. And I didn't want anyone else to take so much time to research because that can become a deterrent on its own. And I started printing every resource that I would find, package free stores, recycling centers, bulk stores, repair shops, and I invited other people to contribute as well. And we started building this resource map. I call it the package free map. This map represents hope. So as long as we as consumers demand zero waste solutions, businesses will compete to bring them to us. Peer support. Now, you have found the inspiration, you have found your tools and your resources, but in a lot of cases, your peers will not make it easy for you to make this shift. Battling the pessimism can become very exhausting. You have to remember to draw boundaries for your own mental well-being. As a beginner, don't take the pressure to convert other people around you. Just focus on yourself. So I realized when the first year of me living sustainably, I had started feeling exhausted and tired and lonely in my efforts. There was no one in my life who could relate to what I was doing or understood why I was putting so much of an effort. I didn't have anyone to share my excitement with or the kind of things that I was going through. I found a post for Zero Waste Mumbai Meetup and I immediately jumped at the chance. It was organized by this woman named Mehdi Shubhasani and I didn't realize it then but that group played a huge role in keeping my stamina to keep going with my resolution. I met people who were in the same situation as me, who were telling the same stories of how they were managing to live sustainably even among naysayers in their life, and the funny stories of what happens when you try to request reusables from vendors and all of that. The social animal in me was finally happy. I didn't have to explain myself to anyone. But when I shifted cities and I lost this like-minded support, I could also see my motivation declining. I realized wherever I go, starting a meetup would be a good idea. Maybe there are others like me who are also looking for this support and they need that upliftment. It's not very different from Alcoholics Anonymous, where you come together and you're trying to quit an old addictive habit and you're looking forward to a better future together. Fighting the climate crisis is like playing a relay race with our community. We need the cooperation of all the people around us, but we also need to do our own part. So why not start small? Instead of standing still and pointing fingers at why others are not running, why not do our part and start running? Thank you.